honor and pleasure of introducing one of my partners, one of my partners, Stephen Sanders, Michael Michael Brewer, one of my partners, family this evening. I'm going to talk about Mike's five in the first quarter.
two miles away from the house. So imagine doing that in a repeated basis in the dark, in the rain, in the snow. I was just hearing my dad tell the story. Oh, I walked three miles to school, uphill both ways, but I did something. Right? It was a struggle. Tuition was tough. My parents weren't able to keep up throughout the course of my, my years here. Um, and so I worked a lot in the student work program to try and pay down my tuition. I know some of you here are involved in the program right now. Sometimes this resulted in a series of tough choices for me. There was a decision of whether or not I would pay for a train ticket to get to and from school, whether or not I'd buy a piece of pizza at lunch. And there were a lot of days I actually went hungry, but I couldn't afford to eat lunch. So I would actually sit at these tables and kind of act like I had deadlines or schoolwork or homework to get done. Because so I didn't want to draw attention to myself, and I wasn't one of those guys that was going to ask for a handout or ask for lunch money from a friend. But I got to tell you, there's benefit in the struggle. There is benefit in that struggle. The words that are on that wall very profound. When you come to come as a boy, if you struggle or work hard at it, you will leave a man. They stick with you. People who haven't gone through that sort of struggle and adversity, who don't go through it until later in life, they are not very well equipped to deal with tough situations. And I gotta tell you, I run into this each and every day at grade where I work. You can see it if you point these people out. The struggle prepare me to deal effectively with life's challenges. And so I get the question a lot as I kind of talk to my experience. Man, how'd you, it's a lot of tough stuff, and you struggle with this, how'd you do? How'd you do? Well, the reality is I had a ton of help from the Mount Carmel community here. I had a ton of help that helped get me through. Coach Frank was one of those people. He served for me as a father figure, a father away from home. And he was a guy that would tell me what I needed to hear, not what I wanted to hear. And as a case in point, I remember sophomore year, uh, played on varsity, uh, we had a game against Brother Rice, and we ended up beating him pretty handily, and I was a backup quarterback on that team, so I got to play a playoff duty in that game. And you know, we had a far enough lead that you know, it wasn't going to cause any issue, but I threw an out pass to the wide side of the field that got picked off the front back. The very next Monday, the following Monday, I knew that that was our film day, and all of a sudden I started to develop a little bit of cold. I couldn't come into school that day. Coach Frank did not let me off the hook. The very next day when I showed up on Tuesday, he actually called me down during the lunch hour, sat me right in that coach's office, sat right beside me, made me watch the entire game film, and then he read me out for that pass, as he should. Right? And I love you for that. It taught me discipline. And it taught me accountability. Right? And that is exactly what I needed at the time. He told me what I needed to hear, not what I wanted to hear. Uh, the Mount Carmel community helped me. It was people like Peggy Kinsley, right? who worked in Coach Wright's office, who somehow along the way found out that some year I wasn't doing much. And so I, was, I started getting these notes delivered to me in class right before the lunch period. Hey, come down to Coach Frank's office and he's talking. Well, when I got there, Coach Frank wasn't there. There was this brown paper bag on his desk with my name on it, waiting each and every day. She never brought it up. She never asked for anything in return. The Mount Carmel community helped me it was people like Neil and Don McKenna. So Neil McKenna was one of my classmates, one of my best friends to this day. His parents, they kind of took me in as one of their own. Treated me as one of their kids, because almost like one of their own kids. Uh, they would celebrate my birthday when, you know, at home, they might forget to. Uh, I was literally part of their family. Uh, well, my senior year, when Northwestern came, came around and was recruiting me, I had not seen any debt to pay the school. It wasn't something that I could work off during the summer as part of the school work program. So they found out about it. And they anonymously stepped in and paid the amount that I could not take for myself. 
made an awesome impact. I, I, I didn't find out until some time later that they were the ones that actually helped me. And when I went to the house to thank them and to tell them that I wanted to pay them back, they actually stopped me in my tracks and said, you pay us back by doing it for somebody else. You pay us back by doing it for somebody else. So these are the type of people within the local community that actually helped me through. They instilled a tremendous sense of community uh, in me, a tremendous state form that are served as a tremendous sense uh, source of support for me. They made the struggle worthwhile, right? And they instilled the sense of responsibility that I carry on with me today to do that for somebody else in the day. They made me feel part of something bigger than myself, bigger than myself, rather than sitting around and kind of doing my own state of the art for myself. I want to go out and make them proud each and every day. I wanted them to feel like their investment in me was absolutely worth it, right? And I wanted to do my part to uphold the tradition. So those things, the struggles that I went through, uh, the support that I got in the long community, I think those two things combined actually helped me and prepared me to answer the call in a variety of situations. So, uh, as mentioned before, my first varsity start, I was terrified, came as a sophomore in the playoffs. So I was starting four matches in the really snatch and I went down with a rib injury in the, first, in the first round of the playoffs. So I finished that game, didn't really realize how serious it was. He wasn't able to come back for the second round. And a lot of people in the media were actually predicting uh, that we would lose the game. So the year before, we were going to it up, state champions, right? We were on a good roll this year. We had a lot of talented seniors. We had one loss. Um, we were on a good roll. We had a good day going. And I did not want to be the guy that ended the season for the seniors. I was nervous. That's all that. Um, Eddie Stewart, I'll never forget this. Eddie Stewart, the right before the game, sat me down in the locker room. He was one of our captains. He played tailback for us and also played some safety. He went on to play at Nebraska as the captain of the national championship teams. And he sat me down and he said, Mike, I know you're nervous, but I want you to relax. He said, there are 10 other guys out there on offense that have your back. And then 11 other guys on defense that have your back. You are not out there alone. You do not have to win this game. Of course, people win it together. And it really, I remember that and I'm so thankful for it to this day. It actually calmed my nerves. We went out, had a good game, we were win in advance, and we won another state championship that year. Right? The experience here barely answered the call. My first game as a junior, started in, uh, as a junior, we played in Cincinnati, Riverfront State, against the number 16 in the nation, Cincinnati Bowler. There were 20,000 people in the stands. I had never seen anything like that. I have a big game here, 8,000 at Yankee Stadium, right? We're playing Rio. 20,000 people in the stands. They take their football seriously in Ohio, right? And it was the same deal. Those seniors that year had actually a senior meeting in one of the hotel rooms and brought me in as one of their own. And actually had me speak on behalf of the junior class as we were gearing up for the game the next day. My tight end, Ryan Kepke, did the same thing that Eddie Stewart did. Me down. Mike, don't worry about it. We're going to take care of this. We're going to do it together. Right? We went out, we bowled handily, and actually put us on the map. We ended up running the table, finishing 14 and 0, winning another state championship, and we finished the season ranked number six in the nation. Right? Prepared me to answer the call. My senior year, a little different story, Father Tony remembers this. I was one of the four co captains on the team along with Father Tony. We started the year 0-2, so think about this. In our first two games of the season, we actually lost more games than we had in the three years prior. And people were not happy about it. Right? The quarterback started taking a lot of heat from that, both the media and from the lungs. Right? So we pulled together as a team and overcame that 0 2 start, ran the table. And as was talked about before, it was a after but this experience here helped us, prepared us to answer the call. And it got us to that final state game that year, 
1991. The worst game of my life. It's terrible. I think I still own the record for most interceptions thrown in a state championship game. I've done four of those games. Right? That game to me kind of epitomized the struggle. It epitomized that season and what we went through to overcome obstacles. It epitomized my run here at Mount Carmel and the struggles and things he had to overcome. Our defense, we had six total turnovers in that game. Thank God for our defense, Coach Dave. Somehow they, get, they kept me in well, six turnovers. They held Wheaton Central to 14 points. Kept the game close. Late the game, we were able to turn the tide, get some momentum. Now one of the final drives, I had, we were punching in for the score. We were able to answer the call. So the struggle, the support that I got, the sense of community, it prepared me and my teammates and classmates to answer the call. So the million dollar question is, all right, so that's great, that's a you nice know, high school career, good job, Mike, right? Okay. What has that done for you the post Mount Carmel? Well, that experience, I'll tell you, it helped prepare me to deal with the pressure of balancing academics and athletics at Northwestern. So it's not an easy task. They hold every student there and their student athletes to an extremely high standard. And as was mentioned, I took advantage of an opportunity that I had uh, under that scholarship under the auspices of that scholarship to earn two degrees. I wanted to get as much out of that school as I felt they were to me. I wanted to make the people that invested in me throughout my career proud and to set an example for others and for the younger system. Right? My senior year, my fifth year, I was in graduate school at Northwestern. And I gotta tell you, the day the day uh, the daily routine was proven. I would wake up 6 a.m., go to the football facilities, maybe get a workout in, shower up, get to class. Go to class until about noon, go over to the football facilities, watch some film on the next opponent, come back after, maybe start down some food. Come back afterwards, go to class. I was late with the back to the football facilities each and every day where they would actually instill the game plan for the week. So my coach would have to get me up to speed as we were stretching. Practice, heat a training table, and then afterwards we go and I have to do group work for some of the projects that we're working on in grad school. This was day in, day out. It was a grind. The rest of the students that I was in class with, that's all they had to do was school. They quit their jobs, those that worked. Those that came straight from school, they didn't do anything. School was it. And I remember coming out of some of the exams that we would take, coming out of the lecture room and some of the guys coming out of here were all stressed out and they'd be crying. Oh my god, I didn't do well. Oh, my parents would be so sad. I'm not going to get this anymore. I'm like, you've got, me, you've got to be kidding me. You have no idea what I'm going through right now. I'm essentially, I've got two jobs that I'm managing. All you have is school and it's getting to, it's stressing you out. It's bringing you to the point of tears. These people have not been, and I don't fault them. They had not been through the struggle. They did not know how to deal with the adversity. The experience here at Mount Carmel prepared me for all of that. They prepared me to lead on the football field at Northwestern. So it was quite a transition. I went from a program where we lost three games in four years to a program where in the first three years we did not win more than three games a year. I mean, we were everybody's home game. It was a laughing stock. My class was rated, get this, 11th in terms of talent in the Big Ten. It's right? not how you want to be known. And it's interesting because here I went from, you know, starting quarterback and a captain to a guy that was just struggling to make a contribution on, on the team. And so that was a formal struggle too. I was always taught here to set their goals high and to keep plugging away, to keep working on it. And I knew, based on the experience here, what it, take, what it took to become a champion and the role that we would have to travel. And I eventually, in my fifth year, became one of the four co-captains on the team, along with Pat Fitzgerald, who's the current coach there now. And it was a tremendous ride, a tremendous experience, but the struggle here prepared me for that experience. 
prepared me to play on some of the biggest stages in college football, the Notre Dame's, the Michigan, the Big House, the Penn State, in the Rose Bowl. Prepared me for those situations. And I gotta tell you, when people ask me what is your favorite memory from all those experiences, it's actually the fact that I was able to create an opportunity for my family to do something that they never would have done before. They went out to California and actually wanted to play. They've never been very much out of the state. Illinois. And so my dad worked at a truck, a trucking company, and they actually, his co-workers, he would talk to him all the time about the experience of what was going on here at Old Colonel. And actually we took up a collection to raise money for him to go out to California. And which was which was awesome. Um, we went out there as a team two weeks earlier. We at that point in time did not have indoor football facilities and conditions out here. Snowy, icy rain. And so we went out there to practice ahead of time to be prepared for the game. And so to cover living expenses, we actually got like a, back then it was like $700 per game. And a lot of guys would go, you know, blow that on, you know, sightseeing attractions, or what have you. I actually sent that money home so that two of my sisters could buy plane tickets to come out and practice this play. I stayed with some, some friends from college out there. That's actually. What I miss most. That, that is one of my favorite memories from the old school experience. And it was the experience here at Mount Carmel that allowed that to happen. In my professional career, the Mount Carmel experience prepared me for the demands of a high pressure job. One of the first things that I, I did coming out of graduate school was within a month, some 20, 40 years old, uh, within a month of working, uh, I used to work at a company called Work International in Port Salt. Within a month of joining that company, I had to make a presentation to the CEO of his quarters. And I actually didn't like this. It was intimidating as all. Like, yeah, you go out and it's just dark, fine, oak furniture. And it's you know, unlike anything else you see in any other part of the facility. Very intimidating. This, this gray haired guy comes out, and you know, it's a guy that makes millions of dollars. It's a one million dollar company. And you know, I'm sitting there making a presentation telling him you know, some of the things that he needs to do to raise his bill. It was an awesome experience, but that was one of those answer the call type of moments that Mount Carmel prepared me for. Lots of pressure packed situations, right? Now, in my current role, I work at Grange, which is an eight billion dollar company, uh, provider of industrial supplies, and I do the same sort of thing. I help executives manage their relationships with 14,000 team members across the business, the media, some like the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times. And Wall Street, investors and shareholders on Wall Street. And you know, if you say one wrong thing, you make one wrong move, you can highly damage the image reputation of the company. The high pressure job is not for everybody. This experience prepared me to answer the call. Prepared me to answer the call at Ranger several years ago as part of um, an kind of easy program within the company. It's called our, our Global Leadership Development. It's a collection of about eight people that they choose every year, and I've with people that are, you know, people that they want to develop as the future leaders of the organization. We do some global exposure, so it's part of this, we actually travel to Asia, my first year to Asia. But it's get, to get new perspective and visibility that actually helps you become one of the future leaders uh, of the company. And it's interesting because at the time, I was paired with six other people in the group, and I was the youngest and lowest ranking. All these other folks were officers. Company. I'm just a director. They elected me team leader of this group. And we eventually had a work on a project to present to the board of directors. In that presentation, I actually talked about my experience here in Hong Kong. The transformational experience that we had. Coming to Kong was a boy. We had a struggle with how to do it. I mean, I'm a man. I actually excited for those words. And I talked about the GOPP being the same sort of transformational project for our team. A month later, I saw one of our board members, and that's the one thing that he remembered about the presentation. So I went to Mount Carmel, same outside of the wall. This experience here prepared me for all of that. Personally, in my life, the experience here at MC prepared me to instill the same set of values that helped make me successful in my children. I think about this a lot. I've got a son, Michael, who's seven, a daughter, Mia, who's five. Thank you.
But the values of discipline, hard work, accountability, brotherhood, a sense of responsibility to one another, these are all things that I strive to instill in my kids. These are things that I, I learned here at Mount Carmel and they mean the world to me. And the sense of brothership and paying it forward. What Neil and Dom kind of did for me is inspired me to work with several of my teammates. Father Tony is one of them, Josh Barrett, Tony DeFilco, and Jeff Schneller to establish the Class of 92 Scholarship Fund. So each and every year, we get members of our class together, we have a good time, we raise some funds, and we raise those funds to help students in situations like you. Good students, good citizens have lots of potential, good heads on their shoulders, are doing the right things and just need a little boost. I want to do that because it was done for me. It's my way of helping to pay it forward. I do the same thing for Northwestern. Coach Fitz does a great job of bringing back former players. He has a football mentoring program. You can't do this ever. Every school out there, you got to be worried about some, you know, some schools about what boosters might, might do. you got to make good decisions. I mentor current starting linebacker, Damian Cody, a great kid, kid from Las Vegas. Uh, he was raised by a single mother who can't get to many games, if any at all. We serve, my family and I serve as a support network, an extended family for him, and it is to give him a shoulder to lean on, to give him a source of support that has been through, right, what he's going through, and that can help him get through. That's what the Mount Carmel community did for me, and that's what I'm so this experience did a lot for me. Did a lot for me. But I'll leave you with this. On Father's Day of this year, my father uh, was diagnosed with bone cancer. It's <clears throat> treatable but not curable. The great news is we still have the time. We just don't know how much. It's a very humbling experience that we're going through. But I've got to tell you, we were talking about this the other night, sitting and watching the MC say green game. One of the things that gives me the greatest source of comfort in this situation is the fact that he has such a tremendous amount of pride in this school, in this community, and as he reflects back on his life, on his life, the experience and the time that we had at Mount Carmel, he would quickly tell you it was the best time of his life. The best time of his life. That gives me a great source of hope. Because all we want to do as sons is make our father proud. Right? So I will tell you, it is, going back to this initial question, is the struggle worth it? For me, that answer is absolutely no question. It's absolutely worth it. It's made me who I am. It's done a source of good, and hopefully the ripple effect is that it's helped to impact the lives of others as well. My wish for each of you tonight, fathers and sons, is that as you sit across the kitchen table years from now, and talk about the time here, that you feel the same way. Thank you for your time.